Well, hello everybody. I'm just having a nice cup of coffee sat here, waiting for the uh, the three o'clock deadline. I'm just about there. Bar 27 minutes. Okay, 27 seconds, should I say, late. It's not bad going, is it? So stay tuned today. What I'm going to do on this live session is, is go through how to paint this cat's eye step by step. All right, all the way from the beginning, right through to the end. They need to make sure they've got the outline drawing drawn onto the paper, ready to go, because I've already done that. I'm just going to get that piece of paper in a minute when I get it in my hand. And what I've provided on my website, which you can see on the top of the page there, the link to that. So if you haven't got any of this ready to go, the drawing, anything like that, don't worry, sit tight, just watch the video, make yourself a nice cup of coffee, okay? And then you can just replay this afterwards anyway, because it's going to be live anyway. So you, and we're going to save it here on YouTube, so it's not a problem at all. So basically, once you've got this transferred on, which is using, I'm stretching here, one second, a little bit of kind of trace down graphite backed paper, and basically it's a shiny side down, slide that between your printout and the watercolor surface. I'm using a decent kind of mechanical pencil with a decent nib. This is 0.5, by the way. Just trace over the top of the image all the way around, okay? With a, like a medium kind of pressure, something like that. And then you'll end up with that. So that's what you're looking for, <laughs> all right? Just from the outline drawing. So as I mentioned, if you haven't already done this, just um, pause the video if you want to, or just watch it live and then do it at the end of it, and then go to that link at the top. I'll make sure it's down in the description below as well, just in case, okay? Now then, right. Are you all ready for this? Hi, Tina. Hi, Diane. Hi, Andre. How are you today? Right. So, the first thing we're going to do, so we've got the drawing onto the paper, to make sure that you can all see it. Is it there? I think it's there. Okay, put that one down. And because it's live, I expect a few little hiccups, because normally when I did all the videos you guys watch and work with, then normally, obviously, with that, and the videos is that I can cut kind of little mistakes out and stuff like that, which which happens on a regular basis. It really does. Okay, all right, that's that. So I'm going to wet down my ceramic mixing palette first of all, which is that one. Just make sure it's in the camera shot, and also my watercolor paints, which you can just see on shot there. Okay. And I want that, that water just soaking for a few minutes. I've already done this in preparation, so I know I'm well ahead of that, so that's fine. I think what I might do is just make sure that the, the palette, which you can see here, is just all in shots, so you can see everything, hopefully. I may have to make that a little bit bigger, so we'll have to see. All right, so bear with me a minute. I'm just trying to readjust things just a fraction for you, so you can just see things a little bit more. Um, but as I say, what we're going to be using is a variety of colours for this as well. So I we want to make sure that the colours we use are, you know, just just nice and kind of toned down to begin with. And we're going to gradually build them colours up as we go along. Now, if you've already downloaded the reference pack for this, you know that the colours I'm going to be using are these. Now, the colours in question, as my pointing stick, are going to be, are you ready? Lemon Yellow, Raw Sienna, Raw Umber, with a capital Raw, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Cerulean Blue, or Cerulean Blue, how do you say it? Indigo, Payne's Grey, and Lamp Black, and also Watercolor White. Now you can use White Gouache if you want to, or Gouache, then that's entirely your choice. So this is my colour testing card, Now I do this for every single painting, and when I remember, which is most of the time, sometimes I do forget, I write down in the corner what I've done these colours for. So at least if you need to refer back to that, you can do at any given time. All right. Okay. First thing I want to do with this is just very lightly soften down these details, the pencil outline, just to begin with. So let's put the brush back a minute. I'm going to use a putty eraser for that. I'm going to make sure it's massaged a little bit first, just to lighten these lines. This one, by the way, guys, is a, a Faber-Castell one, which I've had for quite a long time. And I use this just to lift off. I don't kind of rub with it. Just to very lightly, very light, just a bit of an overspill there. Very lightly, just take off some of that loose graphite. And doing this will just stop. See that? Look at the state of that on there. Doing this, massage it in, will stop that graphite 
or too much of it going within the paint when you add the paint onto the paper. Now as for comments, please leave a comment um, for me to read, I don't mind at all. And uh, my partner Joe is downstairs on the big computer uh, watching this for us as well. So you can pass on any comments to me and I can answer them best I can for you. But because obviously it's a live video tutorial which could last one and a half to two hours. Oh dear, I've got a cup of coffee here and a stay hot mug. Okay, I'm ready to go. Then obviously um, I need to kind of crack on with painting which is the idea and try and show you guys how to paint a very detailed cat's eye. Now, if you want to name this cat, that's entirely your choice. But for me, I don't think so. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. Just the pupil itself. Just lighten that a little bit down there. Okay. Now, making sure that everybody can see everything on the screen, which they can just about. I'm going to go and get some colour ready to go. So I'm going to go for the lemon yellow. All right, so we're going to start off with lemon yellow first of all. Um, yeah, and probably a tiny amount of cerulean blue in that as well. So I'm going to go for lemon yellow and cerulean blue. And to do that, all I want to do, all I want to do is mix some paint. So lemon yellow, just off camera shot there. Don't know if I can get all that in for you, but I'll try. No, I don't know. I'll try because obviously the camera's a little bit close so I can try in a minute and just readjust the camera for you so you can see it all. So lemon yellow and cerulean blue. I'm going to put a little bit of that in that side first of all. Now I want this to be not green, it's more yellow than, than blue if you know what I mean. So what I tend to do on a regular basis is do some colour testing first. So if I put some cerulean blue on first of all Wash your brush out in the dirty water and then in the clean water. I have two bits of water here, two little pots or split pot I use. And then you just very lightly mix these together until you get the right kind of colour that you're looking for. This is too strong at the moment. But you're looking for like a just more yellow than green. So something like that kind of colour there. Now that will dry lighter as it always does as we know with watercolors so bear that in mind when you work with this so okay let's add a little bit more water using my pipette to the yellow and to the blue there we go and I'm going to mix that in just to make sure this is more of a more of a watery consistency I don't want it too thick so this is like the thickness of water out of your tap or your faucet depends on where you live I know I'm going to add a little bit of cerulean blue into the yellow Oh, hey, that's not bad, you know. E bargain, lad. That's not far off. So that is probably what we're looking for. So, if you guys do that, what I'm going to do is just have a look at some of the other colours while you're just mixing those colours up, just making sure you've got them ready to go. Um, so that's cerulean blue with a little bit of lemon yellow, which you can see in there as well. I must stop a habit moving my my tablet. Oh, there you go. Is that better? That's got it. Yeah. God, what am I like? No, you don't know. Now, while you're doing that, I'll see if we can just re-alter this camera a little bit and see if we can make it a little bit higher. So you can see a little bit more on there. Hopefully you'll be able to. Oh, nearly there, aren't we? With that. Nearly there. So I'll try a little bit more. There with me a minute. Yeah, oh, that's about as high as I can go with that. So that will give you some ideas. If I just try and keep it to somewhere like that, you can just about see the the top of the palette and most of the colours there. I did have this position to begin with. But the problem was I was doing this a lot, you see. I was going, hello, it's Paul, nice to meet you. <laughs> anyway, back down again. So um, just down there and about something like that will do for now. I'll just keep turning the palette around, hopefully on the camera, OK? So now you've got those two colours ready to go, fingers crossed. The other thing I want to add in there is, I'm just trying to see what else I need in there. A little little bit of burnt sienna and uh, probably burnt sombre for the markings within the main iris. Or just for some of the markings. So, I'm going to go for burnt sombre first of all. Okay. Now I'm using a ceramic mixing palette here. 
which I've used for many years. I've got a couple of these. In fact, I've got some different designs as well. But the, this is the main one I like to use because it tends to... I don't know. It, the good thing about ceramic is because the the water, when it dries, it dries nice and flat. It doesn't go in like a bit, like a bit of a bubble like the plastic pallets do when you put the water in. And that then enables you to be able to see where what what it would look like with say one layer of brown and probably half a dozen layers of brown you know within that kind of mixed consistency which is watery at the moment so a little bit more burnt umber okay now, if you have any questions you want to ask and, and you're having difficulty keeping up don't worry as I said you can play this back so it's, it's easy enough to play back and then I'm going to go into the burnt sienna And add that in as well. So that's burnt umber and burnt sienna. And what I want as well is just a little bit of burnt umber on its own. I probably need more burnt umber on its own later on anyway for the fur, and also for some of the dark areas around the eye. Okay, so burnt umber on its own. Got that so far? <sighs> Lemon yellow, cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. That's just so far. And I want all of these consistencies, well, they're going to be watery and these two are going to be milky. Now, all I mean by milky, you know about watery, straight from the tap. Milk is that little bit thicker, so when you run run down the sides, it runs down fairly quickly, but not as quick as normal tap water would run. So it's a little bit thicker than tap water. Wash your brush out in the dirty pot, then in the clean pot, so it's nice and clean. And then we can go in and start thinking what we need to do first. Now... With all the paintings, I like to kind of just outline just the main pencil marks within there. And what that basically does, it seals that pencil in. I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber with a size double zero brush. So burnt umber, double zero brush. And when you load your brush, as you can see in the corner of the screen there, <laughs> when you load your brush, give it a mix. So load it, you roll it as you pull away, like so. Then you get some kitchen roll and then you will tap it once, maybe twice, depends how much paint is on there. And basically what that does, it takes any residual paint off your hand, off your brush, I mean, not your hand. See, I told you I'd normally edit that out. And that then enables you to get a finer point on the lines you're about to draw. Are you ready for this? Let's go for it. So going around the outside edge of the eye, just have a look around the outside edge. Yeah, I went all northern again then. From Chesterfield doing you know? it and then just cover up the pencil marks on the outside edge of the eye you can do this little inside one there as well and this will also apply to the hairs going around the eye as well and you probably notice with the with the hairs is that I've drawn them out in the direction that the fur goes so it's not just a few little pointers but there's quite a few little areas all the way around there to give me some general idea on the direction, as I say, the fur goes or grows around the cat's eye. At least that way, you, want, you know, we could give us more shape as well. So if you get that right, then you're doing well. So I think also this needs to go to there. I've lost a line there. So barely touching the paper. Just add this inner line the cat's eye and that will seal that pencil in doesn't always but most of the time it does stay put when you add a color over the top and you can still see this color through otherwise what tends to happen when we add the wet and wet washes on you find it could just wash your pencil away very often doesn't it and sometimes it's beneficial sometimes it's a bit of a pain so depending on how you've um, got the drawing on be it freehand using the grid system or by uh, using the transfer, graphite transfer paper as I've used today on this one. Which I do on all my tutorials just to kind of make sure we get straight to the painting process. So we've got birds tweeping outside. <laughs> House sparrows, by the way. Loads of them. Then, obviously doing that will kind of save a little bit of time to, as I say, when you get it transferred out fairly quickly. Not that you should rush your painting, of course. Okay. 
And a few more little marks here and there. All the way around. So I hope everybody's following this so far. I'm trying to not rush. Not that I do rush a painting, so I never do. In fact, when I'm actually doing a video, it probably takes me, I would say, maybe three times as long to do a painting, as a guess. Because obviously I'm using the cameras and the lights and everything else and offloading video footage. and uh, So that takes a little bit longer to do. Right, okay, and then thinking about the inner edge there and around there as well. So how's everybody getting on so far? Have we got any comments? Have we got anybody that wants to say anything? We've got a lot of highs there. Uh, Diane Main, I'm using Windsor and Newton Professional and the Student Cotman version paints, okay? Which are obviously the half pan paints I'm using. Is that of interest? Thank you for asking that question. Um, I'll just have a quick look at that. But I know Joe will be up in a bit with some bits and bobs as well once, once there's enough questions being asked. So if you've got any questions you want to ask me, fire away. Joe will do her best to answer some of them as well for you. Um, just to let you know that she's online as well. So if you see Joe pop up <laughs> on the replies, you know it's my Joe downstairs doing, doing a sort of grand job by keeping an eye on things for us. While I can talk to you and paint. Okay. Right. So I'm very lightly going over these lines that I've made. Now, when you're doing a main subject, so what have we got? For example, let me just show you what I've just painted to give you an idea on that one. Just while catching up a little bit. Now, if I can stretch and reach without pulling my headset off. Um, the main one, this is one I've just finished, which is for both my website, devonartist.co.uk, which you can just see in the corner there, as a video tutorial, and also obviously for Patreon as well so when I added the um, this outline on this particular one just make sure you can see it all there we go what I actually did I covered the pencil marks first of all in this one but then added um, the pencil marks all the way just before the edge so I didn't put any burnt somber around the very edge of the face and the reason for that is because on, on animals or any wildlife you find very often there's very light areas and if you had all these kind of uh, burn somber marks on the pencil lines over the top of the very edge, you'll end up with like, a, well, like an outline, like a cartoony outline, and we don't want that. So that's one I've just done, which will be coming up in a couple of months' time um, for Patreon. Okay, and also obviously devonartist.co.uk, so entirely into your choice, where you want to go, if you want to have a play with that one. So it's well worth having a play. Okay, I'm right, going to carry on now. Now I always use a little piece of paper. This is just printer paper, that's all it is. Underneath my hand. Um, just to ensure that um, I don't get any natural oils off my hand onto the paper. Because if you do, then that will act like a wax resist. So you have to be careful with that. So you can buy, actually. I've, I've bought one, I've tried one. Um, I haven't got it on me at the moment, otherwise I'd show you. It's just thinking about it. It's uh, a little glove. And it's like a half glove. And what it actually does, it goes over, I don't know if it's these two fingers here, and then over the, the side of your hand. It kind of crosses over it's two fingers like that. You could make your own like that, couldn't you? But the only problem I found, it works really well, so you don't need to use this, but you're still liable to smudge things underneath if you're not careful. Um, it works really well, but your hand does get quite warm. <laughs> so it really does, especially if you've got warm lights like I have here. So you have to bear that in mind. So worth sort of noting. Okay, and a few more lines there. And I think we're about there. So that's all I tend to do, just very lightly cover it up. The colour will depend on the subject. And because obviously we've got a lot of brown around this cat's eye, this will work fine. This won't be a problem at all. Um, but if you're working on something like um, the recent video tutorial which we did of a bumblebee on a violet violet flower then you find with something like that you don't want to use burnt umber sometimes because it might not work quite well it's the wrong color so use a color similar color within the same kind of color spectrum or color palette that you're using for the main subjects and as you know with my videos I always give you a color chart to work from as well so you know what colors are going to be using um, for anything which we do okay right have a quick look on there and make sure everybody's all hunky-dory <laughs> 
duly get the picture the right way around. <laughs> okay, now next step. Brush sizes. Now we've already got our double zero, which we've got there. I've got old, 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 old mixing brush, which is an old acrylic brush. It used to have a point on that years and years ago. But I just use it, you can see even the paint's worn off the handle there. Just to mix in my paints, as you can see here with. Um, that's what that one is. I will be using, I'm trying to think I will be using this one actually, yeah. A size 5 brush. I can't remember if I put that on the list actually, I might have done. So a size 5, which is this one here. This is one by Rosemary & Co, which is that one. And so size 5, and um, it's a very short bristle brush as well. It's a series 93, which are quite nice brushes. And also the same series, the same brush, but a size 1. Got it? What do you mean you haven't? Of course you have. Of course you've got it. So they're the brushes which I'll be using for this project. Now, let's make a start. <laughs> Exciting. I'm going to start off using my size 1 brush. And we're going to wet the eye first, just the main iris. Not the pupil, just the iris. There was she anyway. All the way down and wet it. You want to wet this probably maybe two or three times. Now my members on my website know that I always say that, don't I? Two or three times. I know. I can't help it. Just habit forming. But actually, if you wet it two or three times, then that's fine. Because it just allows the water to soak into the paper that little bit more. And gives you a bit more working time as well. Because if the paper's wetter, it could say wetter longer, in other words, which is what you want it to do. Um, try and keep it as neat as you can within the eyes. Because we're going to go for this greeny yellow colour. And we'll have to, we have to adjust it as we go along. And that's obviously this one which we've got here ready to go, as you know. Um, See, that's soaking in straight away, but I've got two, two very, very large lights here at the moment. Well, all the time when I'm painting, really. So it does dry the watercolour quite quickly. So it depends, obviously, on the temperature in your room as well, and how warm it is where you live. And at the moment here, in North Devon in the UK, it's quite warm. 23 degrees at the moment. So it's a fairly warm day. As I say, the birds are singing, the sky is blue. Myself and Joe have been for a lovely walk for a good hour and a half this morning, so very nice along the lanes. Okay, right. That's soaking in just about, but it's not quite there yet. What you find actually, when it soaks in enough, if I try and tilt this, you probably see the water on the eye there. See that? Now you want that soaked into the paper, you don't want it running down the, the uh, paper like a waterfall. You want it just so it kind of sinks into that the nap of the paper if that's what they call it yeah, of course you do Paul of course you do okay keep wetting it now then let's get the first color on finally I know how long does it take so far so going for that lemon yellow and the uh, cerulean blue I think that might be a little bit too green actually I'm gonna get some more lemon yellow in there at the moment and I'm going to wet that down a little bit more. I think it's still a little bit too thick. So a few couple more drops of water in there. I'm going to drop this straight in to the eye. Oh, scary. So we can drop this straight in now. Look at that. All the way around. Now there are areas which are not quite as yellow. So when you look at that reference photograph. Now I've got mine on a tablet in front of me. Just off camera shot. You can't see it. I'll show you in a minute actually because I can tilt, tilt that other camera for you when we've got a minute. But you can see within the reference photograph this part of the eye down here. Yes, we've got this colour right at the very bottom. But around here it's more of a bluey hint, isn't it, around there? So fill the eye in first of all. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If you're following me so far, I hope you are. I'm trying not to rush, as I say. I'm going to get a tiny amount of indigo and pop that, we'll need more of this later, into a watery consistency. Very watery, actually, that is. I'm going to add this just down the bottom here. Not right to the very bottom, but just around that area there, look. 
just to there, just to vary that colour. Just a little bit. We can always add more on the second layer. And then I'm going to get that mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna. I'm going to start adding this in. If it's too strong, we'll have to water it down. Just around the top edge. Might be a little bit too thick actually that. I'm just going to have a bit more water into that. Try and see where this goes actually. Just that top edge for now. And just put a few little dots here and there around the eye on the middle area. If you see what I mean. This is going to start to add to the texture as we build up the texture on this eye. Okay, wash your brush out so it's nice and clean, nice and damp, and then very lightly just blend this colour slightly. Oh, that rhymed. And maybe a little bit of that colour down there as well. Just quite strong, isn't it? You can see that uh, that burnt sienna coming through in this colour. Okay, how are you all getting on? You coping? Of course you are. Of course you are. Now before you ever start a painting, make sure you take plenty, plenty of notes, you know, before you start. Test your colours out. I'm going to add a bit more yellow down here, by the way. That lemon yellow and cerulean blue mix. So test your colours out thoroughly before you start. Sometimes I can spend half an hour or so just, just testing colours, making sure they're about right before start, you know, just to ensure it's about right on the paper. So I've got plenty of scrap pieces of watercolour paper knocking about of the same paper I'm using for the main painting. So you know it's going to give the same effect, which I test out on first of all, and that's why I tend to work it. Okay, now I need to give this a quick blast with the hairdryer, and I suggest you do the same. I hope you've got one knocking about somewhere. If not, start blowing. <laughs> or whatever you can do. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so while I'm doing that, I'll turn this audio off because it's going to be very, very noisy. Have you all got hair dryers by the side of you? All that's kind of um, anything to dry it with. So if you haven't, I'm sorry about that. You have to play catch up. So we need to dry that and we'll start adding the second layer over the top. Okay. Right. Bear with me a minute. So I've got to plug the hairdryer in, which I've not done yet. God, I plugged about 10 devices in to be able to do this, you know, today, and I've not plugged the hairdryer in of all things. <laughs> okay, right. I'm going to just switch the microphone off just briefly while I'm just drying this because it's very, very loud. It's a very old hairdryer, you know. Okay, so I think what we need to do next, if I can just balance something by the side of me, is have a quick sip of coffee. And we need to carry on and wet the eye. Now, I'll, hopefully everybody's keeping up okay. So let me know that everybody's all right there. All right, okay. And I'll carry on with you. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's all right. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I should be back online now with the audio. I just turned it off while I was doing the uh, the hair the hair dryer side of things because it's very noisy, you know. Okay, back to your size five brush, and we'll re-wet the eye, and we'll add another layer of color over the top. Okay, so re-wet the eye. Now let's only do this probably a couple of times. Just allow it to soak into that paper a little bit more. The reason why I tend to build up in layers like this is because if you're making a, mis a mistake or as a great late great Bob Ross used to say, happy accidents. I quite like that one. 
then at least that way you've got room to kind of correct those mistakes. You know, so you can really kind of uh, sort them out very quickly. Now that's not too bad actually, it's soaking in again very quickly here. Back to the size 1, so that's the size 5. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit more yellow, that yellowy green colour we've got, so lemon yellow and cerulean blue to the very top. Still quite watery. And then back to the burnt on burnt burnt sienna mix. Okay, a few more little dots here and there. Let's go along. And then I'm going to go to the burnt umber. Again, to a watery consistency. Load it, roll it, and tap it. And try and see where that goes. So let's go for this top edge. It's quite dark up here, though, isn't it? So we will get much darker than that when we add the darkest colours in. Just put a line of that in first of all, and then right to this bottom line here. Don't worry if it's not very even because we'll be adding the dark once that was once we've done the eye all within this area here anyway. Just that very bottom edge. A little bit down this side here. If it's too dry, don't worry, we can always dampen it down again. And small little tap marks down the side there. Okay. And this time I will give it another dry. This is still that burnt umber colour by the way. I will give it another dry in a minute, but I just want to make sure we've got the relevant colours on in place before we add the details over the top. So this is all the foundation stage. So we've added the foundation washes in, just so we can actually go over the top of that with some nice detail. And we do that with all our paintings, as you know. Just kind of work on those details. Now, because this is still damp, I can carry on on there and start adding some very basic details in there because it's damp. They will go nice and soft for some of these marks I'm going to put in. So working my way around the edge of the eye, I'm just lightly tapping with a barely loaded brush. Barely loaded, not too much brush. Not too much brush, not too much paint. Barely loaded. So you see I'm loading it, I'm kind of rolling it or dabbing it off. And I'm going to take a little bit off on some kitchen roll, just so there's not too much paint on the brush. And I'm going to add some little tap marks, scumbling basically is all I'm doing here, skipping. So basically all it simply is is something, I'll do a larger version of this on purpose, okay? So basically all I'm doing is something like that. This is a, obviously an expanded, bigger, bigger version. Don't do that big, whatever you do. Okay, so that's all I'm doing within the eye. And this is going to gradually build up too much. The detail as we go along within this little eye. As I mentioned, this will be a long video today because it's a live session. If you did this yourself, I would expect it would probably take you something like maybe two or three hours uh, on average. And we're trying to do it within one and a half to two hours if we can. But, you know, it's done when it's done. That's my uh, kind of answer to all of that. It's done when it's done. A few more around that side there. Now I'm just about running out of paint. I love it when I do that. Honestly, because then you can add the lightest and finest of marks because there's hardly anything left on the brush, and you can really kind of create and pull off that texture, or, you know, grab the texture of the paper as you work around the eye. And the more detail you can add gradually within the eye, the more realistic at the end of it it will look. Trust me, I'm a doctor. No, I'm not. All the way down to there. Okay, I'll tell you what, I don't think I'll bother drying it just yet. I'm going to go for a little bit. I'm trying to think what to put in there. Going to go for a little bit of, um, let's go for a little bit of indigo, I think. Yeah, let's go for a little bit of indigo. I'm going to go straight to that one first of all. I had to think then. I've already got some in there. But I want this more to a, a milky consistency. So we've got watery and then we've got milky. That's too thick. A little bit of water in there. That's what I'm after, something like that initially. If it's too thick or too strong a colour, we can just lightly soften it down. Put a bit more water in there and away we go. 
OK, tap it actually. Now this indigo colour, as I mentioned, is down here. We'll see what it looks like when we start tapping this on. So using small tapping motions on our double size, double size, size double zero brush, start tapping this colour in a little bit. using the very tip of your brush all the way to the top a little bit more around there and again this is going to add that extra detail behind the scenes it's all about building up just down to there Okay, now coming away from the eye, we can see all these lines going around. So you've got this, these lines going around the eye. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do first of all with that. I'm going to add a little bit of this indigo just to the, around the eye itself, around the, the pupil. But I want to make sure that I don't go too close. Because it's actually quite yellow. When you look carefully at the photograph again, when you really kind of pinch into it, you can see there's a bit of a yellow blurry yellow band around it and this blue area like a pale bluey brown color which it will be just kind of works its way around gradually without touching without going touching that pupil <laughs> so gentle hardly any paint on the brush a little bit more actually is touching around there look I tell a lie oh naughty I don't know it's naughty because it's touching it. Get off. Leave it alone. So that goes to there. And then there's a few more down the bottom there. And to the very top. Scumbling all the time. Just using the, the tip of the brush just to waggle it around by barely touching that paper. Okay. Now then. I think what I might do, you know. Let's add a little bit of burnt umber to this indigo in a minute. Just get a little bit more first and just build up this side again. Because then we can make it slightly darker. And then we can add these lines in around the eye. But I might soften this down first, you know, because I like a, a very soft kind of feel. A bit more down there now. This is still that indigo just down to there. Don't worry about these details yet because there's that lovely kind of wavy detail down the bottom of this eye. We'll be adding that in very shortly. Oh, I can see this indigo as well just on the left hand side of the iris, just on this side here sweeping in towards the middle of the eye. See, so building up an eye, especially if you paint something like a horse's eye. Oh, love painting those. There's so much detail within them, they really are. So again, that reflection, the shape. Okay, a bit more down there. So I'm just doing this gradually all the way around. How's that looking? That's looking better. Okay. And then I'm going to get some little bit of burn umber, and I'm going to add that to one corner of my indigo blue. A little more in there. So you've got a bit of a kind of browny grey colour. Again, still fairly watery at the moment. So I'm going to tap it and then I'll start adding this by little tiny taps and stipples within this sort of area again. Building over the top of what we've already got there. See, my intention today is show you how to paint a very detailed eye, and that's exactly what we're doing today. So just taking your time with this, relaxing. And if you just sat there watching, I hope you got a cup of coffee, because mine's going cold. And then continuing this around the top of the eye. Just down the side there. Okay. Now what I want to do is just very lightly soften this down now. So back to the size 5 brush. Wet it, dry it off a little bit. 
and then very lightly just go over these details wet it dry it using the side of the brush very lightly barely touching and I want these just to kind of sink back a little bit a little more around there that should just about do so the next thing I want to do guess what is dry it I know got to give it a quick dry but I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm just going to stop briefly just for a couple of minutes just want to dry this anyway and give you a chance to kind of catch up a little bit as well um, and just make sure everything is okay so while I'm drying this I'm going to play a little video for you just uh, for those just sat watching so you're not sat watching just a dead screen like Dum -dum 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 on the screen there okay and that's going to be the latest video tutorial I know get ex exciting this one um, on how to paint a very colorful hummingbird which is out what day is it today <gasps> 31st out tomorrow on my website devonartist.co.uk and also patreon and dot com as well for slash the Devon artist um, so have a look on there and you'll find it on there but I do advertise it in there so I'll just show you what I mean so enjoy this and I'll be back in about two minutes time now sit relax and let me show you how I painted a very colorful hummingbird in watercolor so I'll go through the process from the beginning all the way through to the end and I'll put this painting together let's get started Now that will give you some ideas on how I painted a very realistic and colourful hummingbird in watercolour. So if you fancy having a go at painting this, why don't you pop along to my website www.devonartist.co.uk Have a look at the link down below. Join now on a monthly or annual subscription and give it a go. And don't forget I've got over 50 other video tutorials as well so you can get painting straight away. I'll see you there. Hello. Hey, oh, I'm back again. Can't keep away from it, can I? <laughs> right, that's nice and dry, by the way, so it's ready and ready to go yet again. Um, hmm, hopefully you can see all that detail in there. I mean, I can a little bit zoom in to about there. I, mean, I don't know if that's a bit better or not. Hopefully, fingers crossed it is. So we'll give that a try as well. Are you ready? Yeah. Hope you got yours nice and dry, ready to go. Okay. Now then, I'll tell you what I might do actually. Let's go for that indigo and burnt umber again. And we'll add these little lines now I mentioned within the eye, within the pupil. Well, from the pupil, should I say, into the iris. So these go all the way around. But again, when you look at that reference photograph, you can see how they all kind of verge towards the center of the pupil. So imagine that being the middle of a clock face, okay? And these are all the hands coming away from that clock face. So imagine that first of all, and then what will happen is you've got nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and so on, and that's how these lines are coming away. So let's go and get some of that colour mixed up a minute. So burn umber, grab some indigo, and you want this more blue than brown, a little bit more. So it's definitely more blue than blah, 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 than brown. <laughs> I need to learn to talk today. 
so it's not quite as bright indigo color give it a light tap and then we can start adding these little lines around the edge of the eye okay you can just see little blemishes here and there as well oh, I meant to show you as well by the way uh, that the tablet I'm using to give you an idea is that there so this heel up so that's what I'm working from uh, with the cat's eye on you can't really see it because I've got a lot of reflection on the teeth on the uh, from the window there there's a cat's eye there you go and that's how I'm kind of working from my um, from my kind of desktop here at the moment to give us some general idea on how it all works now I know my hand gets in the way of the camera shot every now and then so I do apologize but if I just leave that about there I'll have to do for now okay so let's carry on so adding these little lines around the eye just go for the main lines first of all flicking outwards if you can it gets a bit awkward doesn't it if you're right-handed you find it difficult to kind of do that way and me being a, a lefty finds it tricky to go this way when you're flicking out so the only way you're going to get around that is by rotating the paper which we can do but you know doesn't matter today so I'm just going to do the other way around now it's like when we do um, hairs or fur when we come away on the top of the head like the, the leopard which was shown you earlier on you know you need to kind of flick those hairs out to get a tapered line and that's what I tend to do around here as well so let's just get the main ones in first of all now some will be thicker some will be shorter some will be wigglier and then you got the tiny ones get a bit more Paul a bit more uh, indigo in that I think as well you got the tiny ones kind of in between just making a little bit of an appearance in there as well little little tiny ones barely noticeable but they are there okay I might just darken this a little bit more around the side here a bit more burnt umber in there so it's all about adjusting it until you feel it's about right and that's what I tend to do with all the paintings and making sure that you haven't got too much paint on the brush so this is our brownie blue again so uh, burnt umber and indigo so we're still using the same color or colors colors plural around the edge of that and I'm going to scumble this now into the eye there adding even more texture hello loads around the eye okay And then all you gotta do then go over the same areas again for those darker areas. And I mentioned every layer that you put on will get darker and darker all the time. So any questions remember, post them in the comments, you know, um in the live chat there. And um Joe will let me know if there's anything which I need to answer ASAP. And she'll pop up and let me know, okay? So she's pretty good. So you can all thank Joe, give her give her a clap. Thank you. <laughs> Fair Finch is doing downstairs for us on the big computer. Big, that's our main computer. Okay. And I'm going to light this off on this now. Just around these areas now. Just kind of knock it back a little bit. A clean, damp, size, double zero brush. It's all I'm using. Tap the water off your brush before you do it. So it's not too wet, otherwise you could just blur everything together. How are you all doing there? Are you following so far? As I say, if not, don't worry, it's not a problem. You'll be able to later. You'll be able to play it back anyway. Gives you a chance to sit back and just watch, doesn't it? Just enjoy yourself. Okay. So, other than that, you can put the old tweak here and there a bit of burnt tumber, burnt sienna, just into some wet paper or something like that and just gradually build that up. Now then I'm going to think about adding the darkest colour now and the reason why I want to do it now is because when we add the dark on and we've got the lightest colours and like the mid-tones already there it could kind of give us a guide on if we need to darken in places, oh, no idea what that is on my paper, um, if we need to darken or, or add more colour within the eye so we need to go for the darkest layer and to do that I'm going to go for a mixture of, let me think about this one I think we're going to go for a triple mixture triple? triple so we're going to go for burnt umber 
we're going to go for Payne's Grey and Lamp Black. So I'm going to get my mixing brush. So, here goes. Right, so we're going to go for Burnt Sumber. Let's move that around a little bit more for you so you can just see what I'm looking at. Um, probably to about there. There you go, that'll do. So Burnt Sumber. I know my hand gets in the way, so I do apologise. So mix it, and we want this to be more of a milky consistency on this one. Julie, right. Julie wants to know, was the paper supposed to be wet again? Yes. <laughs> Not all of it though, Julie. Just parts of it. Thank you, Joe. Just parts of the area that you're working on. The good thing about that, Julie, is that you can just wet the area that you're working on now. Now we've got the basic wash colours on there. If you just want to work on one side of the eye, you can just basically just lightly dampen it down just once. Don't soak it completely through and just add your colours in. And as I mentioned, if you let it dry a little bit so it's kind of partially dry, then you get a nice kind of blended effect as well at the same time. Okay, Julie, hope that helps. And don't worry, you know, if you haven't, it's not a problem. You can soften it down afterwards if you put it on dry. Uh, wet, paint, wet paint on dry, so wet on dry. So you can do it that way around. I'm going to get some more yet. I want to make sure there's plenty mixed up. I can tell them I'm doing this live. Because normally, or very often, when I'm doing the video, I'll have it ready mixed. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's a secret. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's Burn Sumber. Now I'm going to go for Payne's Grey, which is a bluey black. I do like that one, actually. It's a nice colour. So Burn Sumber Payne's Grey, and look how dull that's made that colour down there. So very dull indeed. And then I'm going to add some lamp black into the mix as well. So wash your brush out again. Always wash your brush out between colours. If you don't, please do. Because otherwise you'll end up uh, tainting your colours within your half pans or your tubes. Especially wiping this off on the, the edge of the tube. So lamp black. Now lamp black I don't use that on its own. Um, and that's because it can be quite flat as well lamp black or any other blacks that you can get so make sure you add a colour to it and the colour you add depends on the subject so if you've got a brown subject obviously it would make sense to add brown to it wouldn't it you know um, if you've got um, a blue subject obviously you'd have guess what what do you mean blue yes you're right of course you'd add blue to it um, so you'd have to think about that I mean even if you've got a red subject you'll add something like a lizard and crimson and so on and so on and so on so it's a matter of kind of working it from those kind of ideas um, and going from that. Now then, you ready? Yeah, exciting. This is where we start getting a little bit darker now, or quite dark. So this is milky, the consistency. So just not quite tap water, but a little bit thicker. And now we're going to use this colour just to go around the outside edge of the eye. Remember not to overload that brush. You've been told, you've been warned. Don't over overload it because obviously overloading it will end up with like a big blob of paint on the paper and we don't want that we don't want that now moving my hand like this allows me to get a nice kind of gentle curve but instead of doing it all in one hit I like to do it gradually and you know, gradually work your way around the eye just down to here using the very tip of the brush Okay. Now we're going to go for the bottom eyelid. Again, try and keep it nice and smooth if you can. If you find it easier to turn your paper around, then do so. If you don't, leave it as it is. Um, and then bring in that line down. And let's join them both together. Taking your time. There's no rush. Don't try and rush to keep up. You know, we can play it back afterwards. and right to the top as well just the top of the eyelashes <laughs> eyebrow low brow middle brow and then there's a little area down there as well okay <laughs> starting to form already isn't it I know brilliant I love it now wash your brush out switch to your size one you ready? That be that little beastie there. Wet it. Just tap it on some kitchen roll just once or twice. 
and then just wet. Do it again, Paul. Just wet the top of the eye on this side. So around between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock on the clock face, okay? Don't completely soak it, otherwise you'll end up blurring everything that's there. Just wet that area. 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Probably just past 3 o'clock. Getting late. Then get your dark colour. Scary. And then just tap that in initially to the very inner edge like that. Don't go mad on it. Okay, that's enough. And then wash your brush out, come back in with a damp clean brush. And then pull that line out into that damp paper. Okay. If you end up going into the dry paper, don't worry. We can just soften it down again afterwards if need be. Just to add this darker part, the shadow, to get, trying to create this, the shape within the eye. Now we're going to do the same on this side, but I think what we might do is just change the colour a little bit on this side now. So I'm going to wet between 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock now. But we're not going to be adding a great deal of colour in there. Just join it onto the other one. Twelve o'clock, nine o'clock. Just once will do it. And I'm going to add a tiny amount of this dark colour first to the inner edge. Watch out for any runs in your metal ferrule there, look. Otherwise, it'll blob onto your paper. That's happened to me quite a lot of times. It still does now, and I still miss it. And if it doesn't blend, we can encourage it to do so. A little bit around there. Wash your brush. Pick up some of your yellowy green colour. You know what that is. Lemon yellow and cerulean blue. And then that can go over the top of that. Just a little bit. Just to blend it in. Ah, look at that. Ooh, lovely. I do get excited when the paint starts to kind of flow right. I'm going to do the same now on this side, the yellowy, bluey colour. It's a matter of adjusting it and gradually building up the colours as we go along. So within the wet paint you can add a little bit of burnt sienna still in there and just play with the colours until you get that nice kind of curved shape throughout the eye. A little bit down there, this is that burnt sienna burnt umber. Okay, you're keeping up. Please say yes, Paul. Alright. Now, wash the brush out. And we're going to go for our double zero brush again. But this time, burnt sienna, burnt umber colour. Still a bit milky at the moment. Let's draw this little squiggle in that we've got. And try and work out roughly where it starts. So let's say three quarters of the way down the pupil. Across. To the edge. And that's where you want to start adding this little squiggly line. all the way down keeping close to that edge there little bump and a tip just there and that's your line already in yes joe jonathan's having trouble pulling lines out and softening edges he ends up pulling paint off any ideas as to how he can solve that yeah i don't know what paper you're using jonathan you'll have to let joe know and joe will let me know uh if you're using bockingford paper or if you're using a different type of paper you find different papers will react to the paint in different ways and that could be part of the problem. Um, so if it's lifting the entire lot of paint off then that could be part to do with the paper. It could also be to do with the paints. I can't remember if you, you said Jonathan that you bought the Winston Newton paints. I think you may have said you did that. I can't quite recall. I'm trying to think back. Um, but anyway, so that could be to do with the paper, it could be to do with the paints and also the fact it's not fully dry. So if I went over this area again, which I probably may do yet, just to kind of darken it slightly more, it really should be dry before you go over the top because if I go over that now, that's going to start lifting that paint off. Okay, so that will give you some ideas what I mean by that. So it could be to do with the paints, it could be to do with the paper and it could be to do with the fact it's not dry. So, so really when you're layering a colour over the top, so we're working in different layers like that, then you want to make sure that each layer is nice and bone dry before you carry on. But I'm not going to that extent because obviously it's a live demonstration and we haven't, we haven't got like the next five hours to go through painting the cat's eye. Um, but uh, in this case, that's what you want to really do. So give it a quick blast with a hairdryer while I'm chatting away here. 
just for the sake of 10 seconds, anything like that, but from a distance, so. From a distance. No, from a distance, so do it from a distance. At least that way around, you're not going to burn the paper and waver that hairdryer backward and forward as you do so. Got it? If I carry on. Yeah. Okay. So back to the other colour. So burn somber and the indigo. 50-50 mix. I'm going to tickle this now underneath this brown line. Just a little bit underneath it. Yes, Joe? He uses Bockingford and Windsor and Newton. Oh, there you go. Using the same paper and paints as me. So it's probably most likely down to the fact it's not dry, Jonathan. Thank you, Joe. Hey. She's good, isn't she? She's good. So that would be what it could be. It's just the fact it's not dry and it could pull that paint off. Um, so that's why you really want to just take it easy with it, really. And if you find that it pulls the paint off, don't worry. It's not a problem at all because all we need to do is give it a quick blast with the hairdryer and then come back in and put the paint back on again. All right? That's all you got to do. So as easy as that. I know it is, honestly. Right, I'm just going to reinforce that dark edge. This is Because I've got very large lights here, Jonathan, I've got basically drying very quick on me. So I'm not having to dry too much. And if people live in a warm environment, they'll find the same thing. It dries ever so quick. So a little bit of burnt umber on some damp paper. That's all I'm doing there, just to darken it slightly. Just to knock it back around the edge. Okay. So far. Now then. I think we need to fill in that pupil. Yay, about time, I know. Now, when I'm painting the pupil, I'm going to go for that uh, dark colour, that triple mix of Burnt Umber, Payne's Grey and Lamp Black. Load it, roll it, tap it. And we're going to add the line just inside our reference mark line at the moment. And the reason why I do that is that that gives me room to adjust. So I can adjust the colour and obviously the width and the shape to make sure one, it's in the right place and two, it's the right shape, it's not leaning to one side too much. And we'll add that straight into the middle. Okay, reload, tap. So if anybody's struggling trying to keep up, as I've mentioned many times now, don't worry about it because you'll be able to watch and carry on watching this after we've gone live as well. So it's, you know, if you get left behind, it's not a problem problem at all. You know we can ask a question as well and I'm prepared to answer your questions even when we're not live. So if you're watching this on catch up, still post a comment, still leave a comment there for me to read because I will see it. I do get notifications from YouTube and from other places as well and I do check it on a regular basis um, when you know when there's a comment on here. Okay so just tickling that down the bottom Go on, lad, you can do it. All the way around the bottom. I see dips out a little bit at the bottom there, doesn't it? Or doesn't it, sorry, for people that doesn't don't understand my lang my accent. And that <laughs> is the pupil added in already. It's gonna reinforce the indigo and the burn somber around the edge there a little bit. Just to break up this edge, just a fraction. So indigo burn somber. Just tapping, very lightly tapping around the edge of the pupil. Just to pull out. Oh, there you go, a bit too much. Some fine, tiny, tiny, eenty weenty little marks that we can see. Okay, a bit more up there. Right, magic. Now, this eye is slowly coming together, isn't it? Okay, so using your dark colour, this is where you get time to adjust certain areas. And because it's nice and dry around my painting now, what I can do is just reinforce anywhere that needs to be slightly darker. I can I notice on my painting, I don't know if yours is the same. This side needs just lightly dampening, just a touch. And then just reinforcing with a little bit of a dark line there. So I'm just blending that dark line into that damp area just wet. And down to there. Okay. And I think we're just about there. Now, I think what we need to do 
is probably go for a little bit of a highlight in there first of all. Um, I'm trying to see what the colours are like in there as well. I might just reinforce some of the colour within the eyes a little bit more. So I'm going to get some some of that yellow colour in a minute. Pop it into there. And a little bit of burnt umber and the burnt sienna. Add that to that yellow. Okay. Got that so far? <laughs> so your yellow mix, lemon yellow and cerulean blue, with burnt umber and burnt sienna. Added together in a very watery format just there. And I'm going to make sure that we just add a little bit extra colour in the eye really. That's all I want to do with this. And we're just about there to think about adding a highlight in the middle. I know, already. I know. It does take a while to kind of build up these layers. But when they do, when you do build them up, you can see the overall effect that you get. I'm just going to lightly soften that down though. The overall effect that you get through doing so. And uh, as you can see, that's really working quite quite nicely now. Okay, a bit of burnt umber in there. Put some little patterns in now. Scumbling with the burnt umber. I did promise you I'd show you how to paint a very detailed, realistic looking eye. And that's what I'm trying to show you today. Um, oh, a little thing I need to mention, by the way, everybody. I know a lot of you have bought my PDFs on my website, devonartist.co.uk. Have a look on the shop there if you haven't, because at the moment... And it's not going to last long. We are stopping this very soon. You get 50% off. I know. 50, yeah, I know. We must be mad here. I'm only doing it for a while this issue is going on around the world. Um, but it's starting to ease off now, which means we'll be easing off on this offer. So if you do want to... I'm just playing with a burn tumbler, by the way. Um, buy a PDF or two. One of my lessons, which are very detailed, and my members on my website... Devon Artists look at UK and also Patreon um, for slash Devon Artists will tell you the same. They're very very detailed, um, straight taken from the from the video itself. Okay, now you ready for the highlights? Yeah. Okay, highlights. Here we go. What I suggest you do? I'm trying to move my hands around here while I'm talking to you. Get some kitchen roll, preferably clean. Your double zero brush. And the first thing I want to do is lift off a few little marks within the eye. Now this is already dry within there, so make sure it's dry first, everybody. Here we go. No, here we go. Right. Okay, so I'm going to just lightly tap and do some tiny, tiny circles within the eye, then lift. And I've left a tiny mark within there. Your brush needs to be damp, not soaking wet. And this is going to lift off just a few little kind of blemishes or little speckles of light if you wish more than anything within the pupil itself so you can see I've created these already let's do a couple then I'll wash the brush out if you don't wash the brush out you find you're just transferring paint from one place to another and you can do this if you found you got a bit too dark in places you can use that same method to add a few little highlights around the eye as well so if you wanted to I don't know, add a few more around there, you can do, and so on and so on, all the way around the eye. So you can do all that. Um, probably another one there. Now, have you all got your watercolour white ready? So get ready, we're going to use that in a minute. Okay. So, first thing to do, have a quick drink, everybody. I you, hope you've all got a drink there, because I have. And we're going to go for a little bit of watercolour white. Now, the one I use is one by SAA. Um, it's a good one, I'd say. I like this because it's quite thick. It's quite, you know, really thick, thick stuff. And I like to use it because it does tend to um, um, mix really well. In the sense that when I want to add more water to it, I can. When I want it fairly creamy, it could be quite creamy. It could still cover. Um, and so it works really well. But there's a variety of different ones on the market. This isn't the be-all and end-all in white paints, okay? If you've only got white gouache, that will work just as well because that's obviously naturally an opaque medium. Whereas normally watercolours, you know, is transparent. Apart from this one. It's supposed to be opaque. But it is a bit transparent when you water it down. So I'm going to add a small amount of that into my mixing palette. But at the top of my mixing palette. 
And the reason why it's at the top, I don't know if you can see on the camera actually, but my board here is on a slight angle. So when you look on this main camera, my board is something like that. All right. So that allows me, if I put the paint at the top of that mixing well and some water down the bottom, just down there, I can then get my double zero brush and then drag the water up to that white paint to make it into a creamy consistency. If I put the water straight into that white paint, it could just you won't be able to control the consistency quite as easy. You know, you could just basically blend it all, you could just soften it all down. And the good thing about any paints, including the watercolour white, when it dries, you can just go back in there and carry on. You know, just re wet it slightly. So I'm going to keep mixing this now to a creamy kind of consistency. I'm going to roll it, I'm going to pull away, I give it a light tap on some kitchen roll, I'm going to go straight into that eye. Here we go. Now, highlights. We haven't done that area there yet, but we will do that at some point very soon. To add this in, you want to add little tap marks. Just do that again, get some more paint. And do this in the direction that the eye kind of goes around, that curvature of the eye. Now my eyes are backward and forward at that reference photograph every few seconds. I want to show you earlier on my tablet. Every few seconds and looking up at that, tab that tablet, that photograph of the cat. And the reason why I do that is because it helps me kind of sink into my own mind the details that I can see. And we'd have to copy it, you know, exactly as it is. You want something similar. So don't worry if you don't get it exactly right. So adding your watercolour white in. Light taps, take your time, there's no rush. A little bit more. Now, I'm trying to see where this goes to. Where this kind of branches, kind of comes off at a sharp angle there. That's probably about a quarter of the way down the pupil, isn't it? And it goes off at an angle like that again. So somewhere like there is where I see that. And if I just get some more white again. I'm going to keep tapping within that area and then down the bottom and then down the side the one there was about halfway actually well I'll make it down there it doesn't matter and even a little bit along this wiggly line down here just to change it slightly I must keep washing this brush out as well because it will clog up after a while. Because what tends to happen with with this particular paint anyway is that it can I carry on with a minute. It can work its way up the metal ferrule and when it does that, then your bristles simply go like that. And it's difficult to kind of repair a brush of that kind of state. So you can repair them. Sometimes you can. And that's by soaking it in some hot water, well boiling water really and you can do that by putting a little bit of boiling water in um, a container, a long container That's not too much, you know, probably about an inch or so deep don't melt <laughs> don't melt your container there alright and drop your brush in there just for the sake of a couple of minutes and that should hopefully free that brush up and repair the bristles to a certain degree, it doesn't always work but it does sometimes but if you're about to throw it in the bin anyway don't, you know worth trying that and if it still doesn't work and you want to save the brush I'd save it for using for masking fluid because we know brushes you know masking fluid ruins brushes and we do use masking fluid a lot in our video tutorials okay a little bit more around there and I think we're nearly there next thing <laughs> and there's more Paul yeah there's more wash your brush out you double zero give it a really good wash out I'm going to go back into that cerulean blue. This is still quite watery in there actually. I'm going to get a little bit more. I want it a little bit thicker. A little bit more. Went into the wrong one then. That's got it. Something like that. So that's more of a kind of milky consistency again. Load it, roll it, tap it. And then I'm going to tap a little bit of this in. Onto, onto the top of some, not all, of these white marks, just to add a little bit of blue in there. 
That's all I want to do with that. And that should just about do. Now then, the rest of it. Let's work on this little area down the side of the eye. So clean, damp brush again. Dampen it down. Back to your indigo and burnt umber mix. I'm going to add this now just the inside edge to begin with. Um, not too bad around there, but we'll do that there again. And every layer that you add, remember, is going to get a little bit darker. Keep tapping. Tap, tap, tap all the time. And a little bit, a few little dots in between. And then we can soften very lightly just by dampening it down with a clean damp brush. Okay, then add another layer. Just on the inner edge now, very inner edge. Just somewhere like that. That's that area done already. We'll do the same now with this area down here. So, we're going to wet it. Now remember, if you've got any questions you want to ask, then please let me know. I do read them anyway afterwards, but uh, I can't reply on the live chat once it's gone, like once it's finished being live, then that's kind of steadfast. I can't do anything to it. But I can reply in the main comments in the description below, you know, below the description below uh, for you anyway, so I can do that. So lightly dampen down, same colour again. And we'll add this in. First of all, let's just blot that in first of all, okay? So indigo and burnt umber, blocking it in, just to there, and around the inside edge of that part there as well. Now, I'm going to get some burnt umber, which is probably just off camera shot there, and a little bit of that dark colour we made. If you remember, that was burn some of Payne's Grey and Lamp Black. And I'm going to go around the edge of this to begin with. What you tend to find, if you've got some very large lights, which I have, as I mentioned here, and they're above your tablet, it creates a lot of glare on the screen, so you don't always see all of the details. So sometimes you've got to shield it with your hand to be able to kind of spot things, really. And what we're basically doing with this, we're sort of filling it in, but we're going to leave a bit of a gap just on that side there. So we've got this little area there, which is a gap. This will be dark. At least it's a little bit darker than that. Yeah, we'll use a dark colour on there. Okay, so filling this in. And now we'll go for the dark colour we made which we use to the pupil and then reinforce this edge don't worry if we go over a little bit like that because that's going to be really dark up there isn't it and also this inner area here a few little marks here and there and then around the bottom of the eye okay wash your brush out give it a rinse I'm going to light this off in this line down just a little bit, just lifting and softening, something like that. Yeah, happy enough with that for now. And then we need to do the same thing for that side, okay. Right, meanwhile, I just have a quick breather, just while everybody's talking there and chatting maybe and having a bit of fun. How are we all getting on there anyway? We've got 30 people following at the moment hopefully enjoying themselves and hopefully keeping up so just while I'm chatting away try and catch up a little bit more if you can um, now the thing when you're painting eyes like this to this kind of detail you need to think about the colors now when you think when I painted this one as a demo I've added more color within the eye so we haven't got time to keep going over the top time and time again with all the colors but you can do so once you have finished the painting with me you can come back in Work around the watercolour white though, try not to add it on top of it because it would just blend that watercolour white away. Because that's the thing with white, is that if you, if you do add a colour on it like we did with the blue, do it in one fell swoop, in one hit, otherwise the white just tends to move and blend. Um, but you can go back in afterwards and add a little bit more colour into the uh, into kind of the brownie, see any colours in there. Okay, so far. Okay, let's see what we got. 
making sure we've got everything on the screen still got battery yep right let's double check what everybody's doing there right okay have a quick drink of, of uh, juice a minute John Smith um, is asking where can I get a ceramic palette with that amount of wells uh, in it like what you are using Paul not what I have now I got these actually from SAA but I think also Jackson's Art Supplies I think they do them as well I'm sure I saw them on there stockless you know when you go on to SAA Jackson's um, I'm trying to think of the name different ones there's loads out there isn't there have a look on whatever art stockless you go on to without kind of promoting anybody a bit late now then have a look on there and just type in ceramic mixing palette which I'm sure you know anyway uh, on that John have a look on there and you've normally well I've seen these on a few different places because of that if you go to my website then you find I've put some links on my website where to find those um, and I'm trying to see if you go underneath uh, right at the top of the website devonartist.co.uk just down there you can do this after the events of course you know, if you want to just write it down now when you've got a chance and a bit of paper go tap on the artist and then underneath that there will be the materials which I use and there's affiliate links which are take you to all the materials which I use okay uh, to give you some general idea on how that works but if you do that then then you'll know on what you know I tend to use on a regular basis Amazon hey Melinda trust you to know what you like okay still keeping up Andre well done you okay um, Ken Bromley art supplies of course I forgot about him um, as well Jonathan yeah he's got some good gear in there as well now then everybody ready let's carry on so I'm going to carry on with the rest of this area down the bottom of the eye that was a quick breather and that's all this area here we shall continue lightly dampen it down let it soak in just for a few seconds in this case I'm going to get that mixture first of all I might just go for a bit of burnt umber and lamp black in there at the moment so this is that dark color watered down basically with a little bit more burnt umber in just so we've got a color on there and the good thing about doing it this way around this is your dark color now by the way is that you can just adjust it afterwards you can lift paint off when it's dry or even as it's drying because that'll give you a nice blurred effect around the edge so you can do all that with all of this. Just go around the outside edge of this section. It's a bit like a teardrop, isn't it? And now for the rest of it. Are you ready? I've got to fill all this in. Now I've got to fill it all in now. <laughs> I'm going to go mad and fill it all in. There we go. However, when you're about to run out of paint... Hang on, hang on, Andre. Wait, wait a minute. I know you're keeping up. When you're about to run out of paint, what you suggest you do... Just put in the fine, some fine lines to the very edge of this area here first. You can flick up if you can, if your hand's working that way around. But look at the direction these lines go for this fur. Notice how they sweep around like that. You see what I mean as you do this? As you keep looking at that photograph, I know I'll keep saying about it. All the way around. Something like that there, lad. Aye. Around like that. keep flicking create these little lines initially just so you know where you gotta go when you scan this with a photograph you notice it's a bit brownier down there is that a word brownier then you need to add that in and I'm not wetting the paper first Julie in this case <laughs> so I'm not wetting the paper I'm going straight onto dry paper now because I want it to remain dark really dark around this eye and this also gives you the opportunity as well to kind of fine-tune the shape of the eye as well. If you find it's not quite round enough, you can just tweak it, bring it in a little bit in places, but try to do that when the brush isn't too overloaded with paint. Otherwise, you find it will, you know, just uh, misshapen. Then you're fighting trying to lift off paint then to get the shape back again. Been there, done that, put the t shirt, well, not quite. Okay, and bringing this down. All the way down to the bottom, down to this little kind of teardrop shape here. And 
I'm just going to leave some gaps in between now, everybody, okay? So don't go mad with this area here. So we need to get some burnt umber in there. Definitely brown here in there, isn't it? A little bit of burnt sienna as well, looking at it. We've got some shapes in there as well. I'm just going to outline them shapes, just a little bit. Now then, this is where it needs to be darker around the top of the eye. So tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw over the eye. No, yeah, no, yeah. Like that. <clears throat> Big gulp. Put a few little lines in there so I know where things go. Make sure the paint is still wet. So it stays wet. Quickly wash that brush out. Give it a tap and then add a line of water just below it and then all you need to do is tickle tiny tiny circles that dark area into that line of water and that will give you a nice soft edge see what I mean nice soft edge there and then you can just do that again if it's not quite enough there look just tickle that into that line of water and that will gradually give you that kind of with the way that the eye disappears into the, the socket as you can see yeah that's better happy with that a few little tweaks it's coming together isn't it okay burn somber adding this over that area there a little bit into there as well need to darken it in places and I'm going to wet some clean water preferably not that clean now. Just down here to begin with. Catching some of the colour. Actually, I don't mind if I do actually. Same with that. Because I'm going to build up all the fur in a minute. That'll be our next job after this. So just dampen down the area there. Remember that burnt sienna and burnt sombre mix we had earlier on? I'm going to add some of that in first of all, just to warm the area first. Because we'll be going around this area with a little bit of raw sienna and raw umber. But just initially, I just want to put that initially in there. And that just helps kind of warm it a little bit and blend it out. It gradually kind of tapers to the nearly the white of the paper. Okay, now for this edge of the eye around there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some more burnt umber and start adding this to the outside edge of this eye just the outside edge now when you get to this area just pull a few tiny lines down not six o'clock more towards five o'clock direction but then they start to sweep around that way here yeah. then fill the rest in with this burnt sunburn Okay, like that. Now for your dark colour, I'm going straight into it. I've not washed the brush out. Oh, watch out for that water droplet pool. Okay, the dark colour, I'm going to use this just close to the edge now. Very close to the edge. I want some of that burnt umber to kind of overlap a little bit. When if it doesn't, don't worry, we can add some more on. Okay, we can keep adding more colour there if need be. It's really, really dark in places. It really is. Uh, probably down to about there where the squiggle stops. That little squiggle there. <laughs> and then, using our dark mix, we're going to start pulling out some lines again to about 5 o'clock. Going over this burn somewhere, which we've already done. Leaving gaps in between now. Now, as you start to run low on paint on your brush, Again, that's ideal because then you can add those lighter marks, those finer marks. Barely touching the brush. And imagine doing a circle, okay, and you're catching the um, the bottom part of the circle. So that's what I'm doing here. So I've got a circle going there. And as I work around that circle, I catch, catch, catch. So basically, that's how I'm working this. So I tend to paint 
just put a few slightly darker ones in there, adding texture all the time. And a few more to there. Now, isn't that looking better? Yeah, you see, once you start getting this dark outline on, it really starts to come together a little bit more. Give your brush a quick wash out, which is your size double zero, of course. So it's only damp, not soaking wet. Hey, see what I mean? There's a driplet. And then we're going to go down here between those lines, very lightly softening those down. Ooh, I went all, all. Funny then. Okay, very lightly softening those down. I'm going mad in my young age. Okay, a little bit more down there. A little bit of dark. Is that looking better? Yeah, looking better, isn't it? Then all you need to then just fine tune anything that you see around it. So I'm going to fine tune this top edge. Now this is nice and dry down there. I can just come back in. Look at the depth of colour around here. Look how dark it is in there. And the way the lines come down over the top. Now, if you can't paint those lines in, which I don't think I'm worried too much about that, then, you know, leaving the gaps in between each hairline, go away because we can add some white on there and we can just tint that white down once it's dry. Just a little bit more. Um, I think I will go into that burnt sienna, burnt umber mix. And just fine tune a little bit more down the bottom of the edge of here. This is how much you can really fine tune the details within this eye and just pick out whatever you can see. So that's actually quite good, really, as I mentioned, because you keep looking at that reference photograph all the time, uh, every few seconds, you tend to see it really detailed, really closely. And the photo I've provided for you today. Is one which I've basically got from uh, an Annette, Annette and Mayer from Pixabay. So thank you, Annette. Um, and it's very large, very detailed, so you can really pinch into those details. Okay, a little bit more dark, so straight into the dark there. I just want to fine tune and finish off this area here now. Okay, so that for the actual eye is about it. So all we need to think about now is the overall shape of anything we need to add in. Add in. Thinking about the inner edge of here, so we've got a nice kind of curve coming down. Working with our dark colour. You know what that is? Payne's grey, lamp black, and um, let me think. Burn thunder, of course. On that. <sighs> That's looking better, isn't it? Right. Okay. Quick break just for half a second or two. Uh, we'll have a quick drink and just make sure everybody's okay on there before we start working on the fur. Okay, have a quick look there. So I'm just going to give people a chance to catch up just for just for, just for a minute. It gives me a little bit of thinking space at the same time because I'm going to start working, as I mentioned, on the fur next, which is working on the the basic wet and wet washes. I'm going to show you how to do some of the fur, not all of it. Um, it's all going to be the same for the rest of it all the way through. So I'll show you how to work just kind of initial areas around the eye and just add in that, them first kind of layers of detail and gradually building those details up as we go along. I just want to make sure you've got plenty of mixing wells spare so you can do that. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to have a quick look at the comments briefly. I know Joe's very kindly commenting for me down there because um, she knows she's part of my team. Well, she is my team. She we're, we're not a couple in life just we're also that in life as well as in business so um so she's completely half of me <laughs> but um <clears throat> but, you know i'm always right though in our relationship now that's because she gives me permission to say that right you ready let's have a quick look uh can i get a ceramic palette said about that one thanks john okay cheers yeah thank you joe for doing what you're doing downstairs um, okay, well, it's looking good so far. Lots of comments on it. Thank you, everyone. We've got 35 people watching at the moment. Um, so thank you, everybody, for being here today. And are we all ready to make a start on the fur? Can we have thumbs up, please? I've got 10 second delay from when I say this to when you see it. There's actually a 10 second delay on the camera. I know, weird, isn't it? Because of the internet. Okay, so I've got a lot. 
Everybody thumbs up please. So I know what I'm doing. I hope you can still hear me okay as well if it's loud enough. Okay, cheers. Oh, that's John replying. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, thank you for Melinda for helping out and Andre and everybody else. It's really, and if you've got any questions to say you want to fire, then please do so while I'm live today. Now, we've been live now for one hour, 34 minutes. I reckon another half an hour and we'll be done, thereabouts. Um, thumbs up, thank you, Andre. Yep, Melinda. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yay! Now, with the um, fur colours, what you got to think about, we're going to be using, in this order, we're going to be using <laughs> raw sienna, raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber mixed with lamp black, for the darkest colour, and then we'll be using a little bit of watercolour white. Got that? So raw sienna, raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber and lamp black, mixed with white. Uh, sorry, with white on its own. I'm not mixed with white, Paul. Okay, let's start making a, some colours up in our palette. So if I move that around so you can see it all, I think I'll use... Shall I use that one first? Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean that one out. I've got a small um, kitchen roll here. And this is our quickly clean out um, just a inkwell section, uh, section. So I've got some old stuff here which I use. And that just wipe it out. And that sorted that out. There we go. Got a pigeon cooing outside now. Okay, ready. So we're going to go first of all for the raw sienna. So we'll go for that one. Now the raw sienna is this one here in my half pans, as you can see. I don't know if this actually is behind on the other camera, so we'll find out. Loving it. John Smith, thank you. Tina, thank you. And uh, Serge, hello Serge, how are you today? Thank you everybody. It's very kind of you to sit here watching me today. I'm really enjoying it. It's a long haul. It's good fun, though. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's good. It's a long haul for you guys as well to kind of sit and watch me live for a couple of hours or so. Um, so it's really good. So raw sienna. You want to make this to a watery consistency to begin with. We can thicken it as we go along if need be. If I probably need to thicken it a little bit anyway. So make one of raw sienna. Then do another another well of raw umber. Okay. So raw sienna. Go into the raw umber. Now, I know you can't see this, my hand's in the way, so I do apologise each time. A little bit of water in there. I don't often have two cameras on, actually, when I go live, because my usual live ones, I've, I've got one which I've got set out ready, actually. Do you want to know what it is? If you do, let me know, and I'll tell you. I'll be painting live, live. Just in a couple of bits, not probably, I don't know if I'll do it all the way through to be honest with you, because it'll be um, too continuous. Um, everybody watching the same thing sort of thing. But I'll let you know if, you want, if you're if you interested. Um, also, burnt sienna. Now, if you haven't already done this, I suggest you make yourself a little colour swatch. You can see that on the other camera there. Now that colour swatch basically represents everything I've got within my half pans here. I've got that stood up like that by the side of me so I can just see everything at a glance. Because it's, you know, sometimes you're trying to find out where certain colours are. I think, oh, what was that one again? Where was it? Even after the years I've been painting, I've been doing this for, oh, well over 40 years now. Just over 40 years, I think it is, uh, painting. So it's been quite a while. Um, but even so, I have to change those colours occasionally. Um, I think I've only ever changed it once and added more to it over the past couple of years or so. I do like the colours I use. Um, what else did I say? So we also need burnt umber and lamp black. So I'm going to go with some fresh burnt umber, I think. So I've mixed all these live on camera. I'll not have them ready mixed. Just so you can see what I'm doing. So I've burnt umber. A little bit more, Paul. And then we'll go for a little bit of lamp black. Probably 50-50 mix. Oh, not black enough. This is going to be your darkest mix. Remember what I said about adding a colour to black. Otherwise you find, you know, it tends to look a little bit flat if you have black on its own. You can use your own black if you want to. Make, make your own black. 
you know so you can do that that's not a problem at all um, but um, I like to use black as I said so it works really well for me so first thing I'm going to do get the size 5 brush okay wet it with some clean preferably clean water mine's not that clean anymore and what we're going to do is wet around the eye you ready let's go for it so we're going to wet all the way around and we need to do this how many times yeah, yeah, I know two or three times so wet it two or three times around the eye okay you want this water to soak into that paper so as I said earlier the more times you wet it don't rub it though otherwise you'll end up damaging the texture of the paper the more times you wet it the longer it will stay wet so it gives you a lot much more working time on the paper and you need to wet this further than you, need, than you actually want to paint that way you can get a nice kind of blended edge to the painting so if I'm going to paint to here for the detail I want to wet it to probably about there and do this all the way around you probably find it could dry really quick on you anyway you have to keep re-wetting it but that's fine we don't mind I'm going to go over that colour a little bit there as well so it's dried in really quickly and a little bit more So once you painted this side, then you can paint the other. <laughs> now this will give us some general idea. The reason why I tend to work on different elements like an eye, a nose, you know, a mouth, a beak on a bird, anything, is because it gives you an idea, no pun intended, but it gives you an idea on how to paint elements such as that within a portrait of an animal. Um, and also the confidence as well, if you practiced it on something else, and you know how to pull that detail up within the eye you know and you know you can work with the different colors and you also know you're going to do a lot of testing remember to that please promise me you will beforehand of your colors before you go to your main painting so do what I do as I mentioned you know get some scrap pieces of paper like this and do lots of testing on some scrap pieces of paper the same paper as I said earlier on that's what you're working from and then you'll be fine okay you ready first color raw sienna so whilst it's nice and wet let's add the raw sienna in and I'm going to go over this pale area first of all as well because I mean that's going to dry as I mentioned a little bit lighter and I'm only going to go as far just to show you how wet this is I'm only going to go as far as see how wet that is there? just before the edge of that wet area and I can see it's wet up to there so I'm just going to go to probably about here I'll catch the edge of this, um, these lines here. It doesn't really matter if you catch them anyway. So using this raw sienna, if the paper starts to dry, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Nothing's a problem in watercolor. We can control this paint. We're in charge, not the paint. Okay, got a bit of color there. Actually, a bit of black I caught there. And then that can come down to probably about there. I'm going to show you just on the initial parts around the eye here. Okay, go back to where you started just to maintain the wetness of the paint. Because if you don't go back to where you started, that's that's obviously going to dry first compared to here because it works away anti-clockwise around the eye. So go back to it to maintain the wetness. Just go back over it a little bit more, and then we're going to go straight in without without washing the brush to the warmer colour of burnt sienna. Now this is warmer, so you've got to think about on the photograph where that is. So I'm going to add this in because it is warm isn't it? We've got this light patch coming down but I'm going to add this in after that light patch. You can just about make out my pencil marks there. Around the brow or just above the eye and to that, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to a little bit down here as well and then around the top of this area. <laughs> the paper's drying now, just drying too quick and I'm going to add it down here as well okay then more down there and that is about it for those two colors now burnt sienna 
I want to put a little bit. This is rich, so it's a very rich color. So be careful with it. It's very strong. Just down to there, and anywhere where you think it's needed. Again, just on that very edge around there. I can just see it, and on the edge up there. See, because while the paper's still damp, let's make use of it. Uh, I can just about make out just hints of it within there. To kind of warm up that fur, so we're basically creating the ground and the foundation colours ready to receive the detail we're about to add over the top, and we are next. That's our next job. A little bit more. I just put it in certain places. I mean, there's a little bit warm around here, so I'm going to add a little bit in there. Um, just a tiny amount up there before it dries, and I think that should just about do. Okay, everybody. The next thing we need to do is give it a quick dry with a hair dryer. Okay, yes I do own one if anybody's seen me, you saw me at the beginning. And then once it's nice and dry, then we'll start thinking about adding the details over the top. Okay, so I'm going to mute the microphone while I get the hair dry going, okay, so bear that in mind. Okay, so hello, loving it, thank you everybody there. Oh, yeah, I'm back in a minute. Alright, where are we? Where's my microphone? Who's going to, somebody stolen my microphone here. Oh, there we go. Right, that should be dry enough. It's still got a bit of a warp on the paper. Just going to put my hair dryer back. So it's still a bit of a cockle there, but it's dry enough to touch. So you can touch it. It's not going to come off on your on your fingers. And I think that should do because it's going to be used now, for, ready for the detail. So hopefully we're all ready for the detail to go on. Um, what was? It? Oh yeah, I forgot all about that. I did mention that earlier on. Remember what I said about the PDFs? You've only got. A, well, we haven't decided on the day yet, but it's, we're going to end it very soon for this 50% off. So just pop to my Devon Artist website at the bottom as you can see down there and then obviously you can just put that hashtag stay at home uh, within the uh, the checkout to get you 50% off okay. So if you're not sure about that you'll have to pause the video and rewind it after the event. Just make a little time note what time this is. Right okay it's going, going, going. I've lost it. Gone. No it's not. Now it's gone. There you go. Right and don't forget obviously if you want all the information for this the outline drawing, the reference photograph, um, a sample, a little PDF as well, which Joe's put together for you on this, uh, for everything that you need. Then go to this link I just moved around on the top of the screen, so you can do that. Okay, so you can get all the info that you want. Now, I know I said that at the beginning. I'll just kind of reinforce that now. You ready? Let's go for it. Right. First of all, I'm going to get some more raw umber. Oh, raw sienna actually. Raw sienna. Sorry, guys. So raw sienna. I'm going to thicken what I've already got in my palette there. So this now is more of a milky consistency. I'm going to do the same, the same, with the raw rumba. Okay, right, raw rumba. I'm going all peculiar again. So the same with the raw rumba. Um, and I think uh, a little bit more of the burnt sienna. And we've still got a colour in there, which is fairly um, milky anyway, of the burn sombre and lamp black. Okay, now let's get detailed. For doing this, you can use your double zero brush, or if you've got a replicator brush, which I make my own. Anybody on my website will know that, and I've got a video on how to do that as well on my website. Um, so you can make your own replicator brush. So in other words, you can paint more than one line in one go. So it does save a little bit of time. Again, don't rush your painting, especially when you're getting near the end of a painting. Um, so you can make one, and all it simply is is something like that. But yeah, okay, don't laugh. I know, I know, I know. I won't use it today because I've not told anybody about using this one. But if you've got one, or if you've got a coma brush, or a rake brush, 
which is the same kind of thing you can buy then use that for getting all these little details on you can use it for the first you know like a um, couple of layers of detail um, but this gives you some very nice kind of you know lines in look all that like in one go so it's very good and that's just an old brush I had which was literally ready for the bin and I decided to kind of make my own little uh, brush which I've called the replicator so the replicator brush okay right so if you want any information on that um, what we'll do either in the description or anything like that well put a little comment on there um, and you'll find that I've got that within my video tutorials as well on how to do that now then just working around the eye using this one color just a raw sienna at the moment look at the direction these lines go don't overload that brush again remember because you don't want it too overloaded otherwise your lines will be far too thick I know a lot of my members on uh, Devon Artist web, my Devon Artist website my monthly and yearly subscribers on there um, oh yeah I mean, we've got over 60 videos on there now it's amazing isn't it? we've got loads on there um, they um, they know I keep going on about not overloading that brush and uh, oh he's on about it again Paul stop it I know but I have to I have to honestly um, because it can you know give you very thick lines especially when you're doing whiskers on a cat or a dog or a fox that were painted you know we painted all those haven't we cats dogs fox so you can see the direction I'm working on think about that clock face as you're doing this and the way these lines go so at the moment I'm working towards more of an eight o'clock direction I've got to reinforce that kind of line down there with the darker color in a bit but this is your first color you're going on with just your first color and I'm just going to go so far out with you guys because obviously because of the time but I'm going to give you an idea how to do this now you notice as well when you get into the main fur around here the lines are much shorter so fairly long around that area there but these get a much much shorter around this section all the way here now I can still see my marks just there look <laughs> you can see they've just about disappeared on me now which they space is under that and again this now kind of branches off towards 10 o'clock this is why I put these little reference marks in and why we use the burnt sunburn at the beginning just to kind of seal those into the paper a little bit more I say they don't always stay there but when they do they can be very useful when you spot them I can just see them here as well that okay and we'll do the same for the top the brow is too much paint on there give it a tap that's better see made my own mistake there I should do what I preach okay and again looking at the way that the the fur grows and you can see how it well they, they all join to get sort of clumped together around here and all of a sudden it changes direction so basically it's going from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock all the way around well not all the way around the clock but all the way back to about 1 o'clock and gradually in slight curves comes down here as well so these are just those initial kind of layers of detail that we're adding on to begin with now my lines are crossing over in places and all that means just to give you an idea a lot I'll just overdo it on purpose is that when I'm adding these lines in, I'm not doing them just parallel one another like that, what I'm actually doing, I'm overlapping them like elongated crosses. Okay? So that's how I'm working this at the moment. Just with this <laughs> too much. Give it a wipe with, with your finger. Just with this one colour. No, I don't like that like that. So I'm gonna very lightly soften that down. Just with a clean damp brush. See I make mistakes. I would have left that in the video, by the way one of my videos you know I'm very honest and open with you so you know exactly what I'm doing and the way I tend to teach as well is the way I like to think simply <clears throat> yeah. now the way I tend to teach is that way really I'm, I'm not a very arty person in the, sen in the sense of all the jargon and stuff like that you know um, if it's blue it's blue you know and if it's a cerulean blue I'll tell it's cerulean blue so I don't get too arty about tonal values or anything like that. I know it's important, I realise that, but I'm not that kind of artist. I'll just tell you what I see and 
how I paint it and it's as simple as that so hopefully it's uh, showing you exactly what to do in a very uh, kind of not simplistic but you know what I mean in a easily explained way I think and I just explain the way that I think I just be myself okay so these lines get a little bit shorter as they come underneath there and see so we've still got a bit of a hard edge coming down there a little bit so that's when you want to start adding a few more little lines in there and gradually building up these little details keep loading keep rolling occasionally tap it if there's too much on the brush nearly run out of paint already and there we go and then we do the same at the very top So what's your painting project today? Right, if you've got a minute or a second or two, just post in the comments for me if you don't mind. It'd be quite interesting to what people are working on at the moment. You know, if you're painting not just today but for for you know for the next few days on and off, what's your what's your painting project? You're working on flowers, working on animal, if so, what flowers are they? What animal is it? Just let me know. I'd be quite interested to know actually on that. So what you're painting today. Right just carrying on now right over the top of the eye just adding this first layer in you can see already just by adding this layer in it's starting to come together that you know the detail is starting to work just kind of lightly soften that down that's better look. and again I'm angling these in different angles crossing over all the time looking at the way the lines go and then finishing off around there yeah, happy enough with that. A few more little ones down there. Okay, so now for the next colour, you ready? So we're going to go for the next colour, which you know is going to be the raw umber. So I'm going to have a very quick drink of pop a minute and I'll be with you. Okay, it's a lot of talking for two hours, but I quite enjoy it. Now, again, this is more of a milky consistency. Raw umber. Now I want to look to see where it's actually a little bit richer in colour, and that is that's that is that's this area around here now. Got an airplane going over. <laughs> and I want to make sure we've got these colours in. So when we offer the dark colours up in a bit, these colours will still show through. They really will. And that's what we need to do, just maintain those colours. So now what I think about it's not going to be the same colour all over. It's richer in this area around here, especially around this part of the eye, isn't it? So you can see how rich it is around there using this colour. Yeah, raw rumbers is a quite a nice colour. I do use it a lot in my paintings. I suppose because it's usually wildlife I paint, well, nine times out of ten. Or oh, ten times out of ten, most of it, you know, it probably is actually, because it's wildlife I paint um, all the time um, as video tutorials and for myself occasionally as well. Believe it or not, I do get the odd the odd moment when they can do that. Not very often though. Um, tiny, tiny marks here. Look, look at the direction you're going again. Just quickly mention that before rabbit on about something else. Um, then you know you will find that when you relax and you just paint yourself a something a little bit different then it's good fun that's why i did the bumblebee actually i wanted to do something different for my members and the bumblebee on the uh, violet flower and uh, that you know really enjoy painting that that's good fun and i know a lot of people so far so far have really enjoyed it now if you've done any of my paintings from my videos and you are one of my members on either my website down there devonartist.co.uk or my monthly or uh, annual subscribers then or on patreon obviously on my patreon uh, forward slash uh, patreon.com forward slash the devon artist you find me on there anyway um, then I would love to have a copy of your photos of the photograph of your paintings because on my devon artist website down there we can add it to our members gallery so Joe has created a gallery where we can add our members paintings from our video tutorials if you wish to share it we will uh, we'll get it in there for you uh, for other people to see what you've been up to so they can also enjoy the work you've done as well as myself and I will put a little comment if you email it to me 
Okay, so again, you can go to my um, website. You can email me from my website if you want to. Um, and I don't mind at all. And my email address, if you've got a pen and paper, I know you're in the middle of painting now, aren't you? You can find it on, so you can find it on uh, my website anyway. But it's paul at devonartist.co.uk. And there you go. Got it all? Yeah. But yeah, I'd love to have a copy of your painting so we can show everybody else what you've been up to. The ones that you've done for my videos, as I said. So, Right, okay. So that, believe it or not, is that layer already on. Now I can come out further. You can even taper this. So it's just a few little tiny marks suggesting that it carries on. So it sort of kind of blends away around the very edge. Now then, burnt sienna. Again, you want this to a more of a milky consistency. I don't want anything creamy, really. And this will go only in certain places. Though. We're getting a lot of detail on this already. Just a little bit down here. And that mix in with the raw rumber, um, and also the the raw sienna that we had on there. So I'll just mix in with that, and anywhere which is slightly richer in colour, a little bit round there. Oh, I'm dog barking. Especially here, actually, there's a bit of a very colourful area just disappearing off our painting just up there, and around the inner edge of these lines. A little bit more and just to there anything else no I think that's about it and maybe a little bit more on there now then quick breather give people a chance to catch it just for half a minute so I carry on doing that I'm going to go for the next color which you know is that blacky brown color so lamp black and burnt umber uh, just make sure it is okay on there so if you've got any questions, remember, um, ask away now while we're live because this live chat ceases. Obviously, it could still be there, but you won't be able to add to it once we've, once we've stopped the live feed. So you can put it in there. But don't forget, you can always put it down below as well. So I've got my drink here. There you go. Uh, you can put it down below as well if you want to. So um, under the uh, description area. Right. Are you ready? Caught up yet? Yeah, of course you have. Burn some of the lamp black, and you want this now to a creamy consistency. So it's going to be even thicker. We've done watery, we've done milky. Now creamy, what it actually does, I don't know if you'll be able to see this because my hand's in the way. It could run down the sides of the mixing palette, but it takes its good old time going down. So it's a bit on the old slow side. I've been like that sometimes. And that's what I would class as creamy. It's not thick because we can paint a straight line without it breaking. If it's thick, you find that line will keep breaking all the time. You're forever reloading that brush. So load it, roll it, give it a tap on some kitchen roll again, and we'll go in for the darkest layer. Here we go. I'm getting really nervous now. No, I'm not. Here we are. Right. Behave yourself, Paul. Now, I'm going to start off with some very short, sharp, shout, no, short, sharp marks. Of course, say that. That's difficult to say, isn't it? So very short marks just along this area here looking at that reference photo I know I know but we need to keep doing so and you can see actually when it branches around here it kind of all goes all over the place there it really does but I'm not going to go down to that that far short little marks overlapping but gradually fanning out we've already got our lines we know which way we've got to go with all this so gradually fanning out and I'm just hang on doing this area just yet I'll show you why in a minute. And this now hooks up in that general direction towards the kind of pale area we can see. Now I'm just about running out of paint. Now I'm going to go to this area because I've just about run out of paint. And that will give us some finer marks around this part of the eye. And you can add these as well actually just inside here. See how fine they are? So you can really get ever so fine. Now the thing is with any detail work, any fine detail, you know, you can add as much details as you want to add. If you want to add even more detail, you can. You know, and sometimes I will. Sometimes I've been painting a painting for myself where time isn't an, an, an issue in the sense of trying to do a video uh, tutorial. Then I may sit and paint another two, couple of layers over the top, you know, and just, just spend more time painting the layers. 
and I'd really enjoy doing that because I find it one, it's therapeutic and I'm hoping my members find the same way as well, that it's very therapeutic doing layers um, and also when you see it come together, especially when you get this dark layer on and then you start seeing all these layers, all this hard work finally come to uh, come together on there then you know the time's well spent and also enjoyed at the same time so okay now here we go we'll start building up the details around the eye now a few little tiny ones in between and now these are very small marks all in the right direction slightly overlapping in places as you can see here well I went all posh then didn't I as you can see here just a few in this area there tell you what to do actually when you're working on this just work your way around this this kind of pale area first of all overlapping your lines in places and start to run out of paint you're not going to do it in a minute when it's starting to run out of paint just overlapping overlapping your lines in the right direction of course just over there now I'm going to go close to the eye now and pull out a few tiny ones now that the brush is nearly dry away from this dark line a few more go on Paul you can do it a few more looking at the overall shape so don't do this area when you've got a fully loaded brush or when you just loaded it even if you're just taking some paint off just wait till you've kind of nearly run out and this is where you can add these little tiny marks in there now just to build up this area that little bit more and sparrows are still going for it out there, they really are, they are kind of very vocal today Man, it is breeding season so I'm not surprised right get some more paint, give it a tap and then start building up your details around the eye as you go along. A few more around there. Okay, and gradually building this up. Try to maintain this pale area in the middle there as well, just underneath the eye, because that all adds to the overall effect, doesn't it? And also notice it gets paler as it comes up, so it's not quite dark up here. You've got few odd marks in there, not too many and again don't have an overloaded brush when you go up there just a few and then so what you want to do as you come down let's get some more paint now as you come down bring your lines closer together overlapping as it comes down this low as it gets darker tap down this area here got the idea? right so that's giving you some idea how to do that area down there and now I'm going to just switch places in a minute and go to the top a little bit more and just down to there okay get so involved in the painting I really do I'm sure you do as well time does literally fly by doesn't it you know when you're really enjoying yourself now I want to add in this dark area here first of all so the way we want to do that is bring the lines so they flick out so they taper away and then bring them out the other way so they taper that way as well so flick out flick out flick out in the right direction you know that and then inwards flick out and then outwards and then they simply kind of gradually get thinner the dark area as it goes to the fur again around there, now then and that's going to come in a little bit closer load it and then we'll carry on this time we're going to work on the area, the area above the eye looking at those angles all the time that I can see within there I 
And you find actually within there, I can see there's a little bit more brown. <laughs> the house sparrows are really noisy, aren't they, today? <laughs> really noisy birds today. That's fine. I've got the window wide open, so I'm not surprised. They'll probably fly in in a minute. No, I hope not. Not into the painting. What a mess that'll make. Okay. And then as your brush starts to dry, get a little bit more paint. I just have to show you that way. Then just ease off the pressure on the brush to get the final lines as you come away along the top here. It's nearly dried out, run out of paint, nearly gone. Okay. All right, so far, I hope you're keeping up with us, everybody. If you're not, as I said, you can just play it back later on. And if there are certain points, um, as I mentioned as well, that you find of interest that you want to just kind of remember. You know the video, you know this will be saved on here anyway. Saved on YouTube, you can watch it from my website, as you know from the link above, which I've left on all the way through, because I forgot to take it off. Um, <laughs> um, you find anyway on there, when you look at the reference information, um, you can make notes of the times when, when certain things are. We might be able to put a little timestamp in there as well, possibly, for you, little key points, uh, areas where you can go to. I don't know if we can do that with YouTube live videos actually, we might not be able to do that. We can actually make little notes for you, you know, when I'm doing certain elements of it. So you can just fast forward the video to that point, just kind of drag the bar along. But you know that anyway, sure you do. Right, okay. So again, look at the direction these all go in. And I can see now within this kind of uh, fairly dark area around there, which we put the burnt sienna in. There's a few little marks in there. We're nearly, we're nearly finished this, everybody, haven't we? Nearly, not quite. It's got more to do. And bringing the brush down now. Now, anything in here, just hang fire, okay? We're going to do that with a dry, or nearly dry brush. We just want to put some very light suggested marks in there. Just hang fire, nearly there. And then, now I'm going to come in, and a few little fine marks in there, to finally finish, not quite, not there yet, stay tuned, just working on the palest sections that we can see. Okay, a little more around there. As I mentioned, you can you can expand this around if you want to. You can really kind of have fun with the paint and the fur and do what I'm doing. And try different colours as well. As we know, animals all vary in colour, don't they? They very often do. And when you're taking the photographs of an animal, you have to remember quite a few different things, actually. It's not just taking the photograph that matters. It's also the light, you know, the light itself. You know, one of our photographers on here, cracking photographer called Andre, Andre Burke. Hello, Andre. I know you're watching and you're following along. Thank you very much indeed. But you're also, you're a very good photographer and um, you know yourself that the light makes a big difference. And it also plays a part within the, the main painting. So when you view that photograph on your tablet or iPad or laptop or mobile phone, you find the colours may look a little bit different from one device to another, which they do. You know, um, so you may paint it slightly different colours the way that you're watching this video now to the way it actually is. I know, it's amazing really. And if you take a photograph of an animal with a flash, then you find the flash will probably bleach out some of the colour. And because it bleaches the colour out, you haven't got the true colour for that animal. You know, sometimes, you know, when I've done commissions in the past, I've, had, I've asked customers to kind of let me have reference to the photographs again it's going to get some burnt on burn um, burnt sienna by the way um because uh, from different things you know taking the photograph outdoors indoors flashing the eyes there's all sorts so think about the colors of the photograph even the weather can make a massive difference as well if it's bright if it's sunny if it's overcast if it's raining anything can make a difference to the photograph so what you see here is not necessarily the precise exact colors there you go Bit interesting stuff. Right. I think that'll just about be a 
about it on there now. So you can tweak this as much as you want, so you can fine tune it, and you can have a play with the colours as you go along. But that'll give us some ideas how to paint a cat's eye. Now, I'm going to put a little link on the side here for you as well after the video's uh, been published once it's all been rendered and sorted by YouTube. And that little link, which I want you to click on, is to how to paint a tiger's eye. I've got two parts on that, on how to paint a tiger's eye. So if it's not there, it won't be there yet, but I'm going to pop it there for you very soon. Um, and so refer back to that when you watch this video again. So if you painted a cat's eye, now the tiger's eye is a live one I did live again, but not as a paint with Paul session. It's just a live video footage, um, which I did on YouTube. On YouTube, so if you fancy painting a tiger's eye, then that's well worth having a go. Okay, so remember to do that, and also remember as well if you want to go to my website, I keep mentioning it all the way through. I know I do, but I have to, you know. Um, if you fancy having a go at painting two videos, two two of my paintings from my videos I've done. So you can get some ideas on how I work if it's the kind of thing that you would like to do. It's all free. All you've got to do is just sign up as a free member. As simple as that. And you can learn how to paint a robin in watercolour. You get the reference drawing and the uh, reference photographs of it and the, the outline drawing. All the colours you'll need as well. You get to know what colours you need ready for it. So everything you need really to be able to paint that project and obviously the entire video footage on how to paint a robin. But there's also one there on how to paint a bee eater as well I put on there as well or Joe's put on there for me and that is lovely colours I'm using on painting the bee eater so go to my website down below devonartist.co.uk and then obviously you can do that okay right so I'm going to call it a day but remember to click on that link to the right which I'll pop in after we've gone live um, today on how to paint a tiger's eye and I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and I'm going to say until next time around everybody thank you very very much and if you want me to do this again just let me know in the comments down below and i'll do another live session at some point in time so stay well stay healthy and stay safe you know that above all you know enjoy your painting sessions so until next time bye for now